31 things that surprise first-time visitors to Thailand. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, we'll be talking all about Thailand and the cultural shocks that amaze people when they first go to Thailand. Um, this video, it's a live stream. If this is your first time on one of the Yellow Productions live streams, well, welcome. I look forward to hanging out with you all for about the next hour or so. If you're watching the archive, we'll make sure you click subscribe, turn on the bell uh, to get notifications so that you can get in on these live streams where I always give away a Yellow Productions t-shirt uh, to a lucky viewer, but we will do that later. So what shocks first-time visitors to Thailand? Could it be that it's called the Land of Smiles, yet there's a scam hiding on every corner? That might be one of them, and there's 30 more in this list. So in this detailed live stream, I'll be going through those for you, uh, and I want to give a hat tip, even though I'm not wearing a hat, but a tip of the hat to Johnny Bank. Uh, who provide a lot of the basis content for this live stream. I did a previous live stream last week about uh, 31 things that surprise first-time visitors to the USA, uh, and so a lot of this information parallels some of that, but I uh, added my own information, changed up some. So uh, things that are good, uh, credit to Johnny Bangkok. Anything that's bad, uh, you can totally blame me. All right, so the first thing here that uh, surprises visitors to Thailand and something that really surprised me for sure is that the Thai king is everywhere. Everywhere you go, you see pictures of the Thai royal family. These are pictures of kings, but they'll be like huge multi-story pictures, pictures in restaurants, people, it, pe pictures in people's homes. They really are everywhere. And uh, the Thais, like we often think of the U.S. as patriotic, but I think the Thais are even more patriotic than the U.S. when it comes to their royal family. Also, the national anthem is played twice daily in public places in Thailand uh, at 8 a.m. and at 6 p.m. So, like, if you're in a BTS station, which is their SkyTrain, uh, they play the national anthem there at 8 a.m. And if you're in the station at 8 a.m. when it's played, uh, you should pause uh, and listen to the national anthem before you go about your day. Uh, we don't even do that here in the U.S. We love American flags, uh, but we don't really publicly play the national anthem and ask people to pause for it. Uh, so that was something, that was the first thing that surprised me going to Thailand. Second thing that surprised people going to Thailand is just how hot it is. You know, we've all heard that Thailand is hot, and I've heard that Thailand is hot, and I've been to Singapore, I've been to Taiwan, I've been to hot places. I felt like Thailand was hotter, you know? And uh, in Thailand, the country has... Um, like three seasons and it's officially known as the cold season the rainy season and the hot season but i feel like it really should be called the hot season the hotter season and oh lord i am melting season you know when your shins sweat you know that part of your leg that's between your ankle and your knee when you're getting sweat on your shin uh you know that it is really hot um and uh, David Empire uh, just really needs to go away now. So, bye, David Empire. Thank you. Um, and uh, Melissa says, OMG, good morning from Thailand. Melissa, are you in Thailand right now, tuning into the live stream? If so, I think that is fantastic. Uh, all right. So, let's go on to um, the third thing that surprised visitors to Thailand. Uh, and... That is the Thai smile for sure. So Thailand uh, is kind of officially or unofficially known as the land of smiles. And uh, there's actually even an airline right here called uh, Thai Smile. Some stewardesses from Thai Smile Airlines because the smile is so famous in Thailand. But the friendly smiles, they go they go a long way. You go to Thailand and everybody's smiling at you. Um, and... Uh, like, I think that also helps make up for their lack of English language skills as a, if you're not a Thai-speaking visitor. Um, and don't be surprised if strangers will come up to you on the street and offer you advice and talk to you. Uh, the Thais are really friendly. Uh, but I will say, don't let your guard down because the four thing that surprised visitors and surprised me too are just the number of scams that are prevalent in Thailand. There are a lot of them. It feels like even though there's someone smiling around every corner, there's someone trying to scam you around every corner too. And they'll be smiling when they do it, by the way. Uh, and 
you know, one of these, for example, is uh, don't take a taxi driver's word that an attraction is closed. Famous scam. You want to go to the Royal Palace? Taxi driver says the Royal Palace is closed. But I got a great temple that I can take you to where the taxi driver gets a kickback. And of course, OC Girl and I, we knew about all these scams because we wrote a video that we shot. Uh, in Bangkok about Bangkok scams, and yet uh, many of these scams were attempted on us. Uh, so they really, really happen quite a bit. Even coming out of the airport, you think, oh, take the official taxi rank. They won't try to give you the scam with no meter. Oh, oh, but they will. Uh, and Melissa earlier, she said she is indeed tuning in from Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand. Excellent, Melissa. Please chime in if you think there's something to add uh, to give a bit of a local perspective. Varun says, uh, Varun loves Thailand because the hotels are amazing. They are amazing. And Kathy says uh, she's wearing her Yellow Productions t-shirt on today. Fantastic. Kathy, that is excellent to hear. Uh, Carlos asks, how many times do they scam you, Chris? Um, so for us, it was mostly in taxis. Like we got like attempted to be scammed out of the airport. Uh, and then many of the taxis we got into were like... Um, you know, wanted to charge us three times the price. So that happened uh, almost all the time. Uh, and Melissa says, why am I talking about Thailand today? Um, because uh, Johnny Bangkok commented on my things to know that surprise people coming to the U.S. video, which I did just last week, and so I thought it was a great parallel. Last week I talked about the U.S. Today I'm talking about Thailand. Other than that, there's no reason why I'm talking about Thailand as opposed to, what, Iceland today. Um and uh, Carlos says, does your shirt sweat uh, in Thailand? It does, yeah. Like cotton shirts, really bad idea in Thailand. Uh, something, you know, polyester that dries much better, uh, a lot better than cotton. Just uh, anyway, soaks up. All right. The fifth thing that surprised visitors to Thailand is the traffic. The traffic. Oh, and by the way, I want to say, if you want to know more about scams, as I you saw the thumbnail, I have a whole video about it. You can find a link in the description below to my Bangkok scams video. You can watch after you're finished watching this one. Uh, so traffic, uh, it's bad. It's probably worse than you can imagine. It's really particularly awful. Um, and at rush hour, it it barely moves, which is actually why uh, motorcycles and scooters are so prevalent. Actually, Bangkok is one of the few places in the world that you can get a motorcycle taxi, uh, a motorcycle taxi that will pick you up and take you someplace as you ride on the back of the motorcycle, because at rush hour, it seems like the only things that move are um, the motorcycles. They also do food delivery on motorcycles as well. And because there's so many motorcycles, they have like a special place that they stop uh, like out in front of the intersection. And sometimes it just feels like you're being, you know, attacked by motorcycles. And of course, tuk-tuks too. They're famous. They're famous little vehicle. The sixth thing that surprised visitors to Thailand um, is that like physical fitness is not really a thing in Thailand. Uh, in, in particular, you won't see people really running around. You won't see people jogging. You don't see gyms because uh, most Thai people have been uh, physically fit. Well, that isn't until the arrival of Western fast food chains. Uh, McDonald's, KFC, these sorts of things uh, have started to spring up in Thailand. With that, I think people have started to become slightly rounder. But, um, you know, in the U.S., you see people running, jogging. You see gyms on every corner. Uh, definitely not something you see as everyday life in Thailand. Uh, and Fred Lim points out that I got a haircut Floby, in fact, yes, I cut my hair last night, and I recorded a video about it. So uh, it's all about how to use the Floby to cut your hair, which is what I use. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, Alex wants to know if I'll be going to Japan soon. I have no plans to go anywhere at the moment, so I'm not sure uh, where I'm going anywhere with the current situation. Uh, Jesus wants to know, what's my favorite restaurant in Bangkok? Um... It's a Pad Thai restaurant. It's called like Tip Semi Pad Thai. Uh, it's near the Royal Palace. I'll have some pictures of it later when we get to the food section, uh, but they're really good. David asks, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten in Thailand? Um, you know, OC Girl and I don't really go for a lot of the strange foods. We kind of go for normal foods, so I can't think of really any really strange things that I've eaten in Thailand. If I think of something as I go, I'll let you know. The seventh thing that'll surprise visitors to Thailand is that uh, mornings 
Mornings are sleepy time in Thailand. If you're used to getting your morning Starbucks or coffee like at 6 a.m., you might very well be disappointed and find all the coffee shops are still closed at 6 a.m. Most shops don't really open until lunchtime. Most of the cities don't really start to come around until lunchtime. Uh, and, and you're really hard-pressed to find any place open for breakfast outside of maybe the breakfast in your hotel. Um why uh, it's so hot and so thailand's much more of a night culture when it cools down a little bit uh you know being out in the oppressive sun uh is just rough and and jake does point out that not all of thailand is as hot as bangkok for sure but bangkok is uh particularly oppressive carlos wants to know what am i drinking today um today i'm actually just drinking water in this cup ice water in this cup today um Honestly, Bridget says, my mom is watching you with us for the first time. Can you say, hi, Ellen, I love your purple hair? I can say that. Hi, Ellen, I love your purple hair, and thanks for watching today. Um, oh, yeah, and Carlos asked if that previous picture uh, that I had was uh, was Ronald McDonald. Yeah, it is Ronald McDonald right there, um, and uh, he's doing the traditional Thai greeting where you put your hands together like that to greet people. And so all of the McDonald's in Thailand, or many of the McDonald's in Thailand, have the Ronald McDonald doing uh, that greeting out in front of them. All right. The eighth thing that surprised visitors to Thailand is dual pricing. Uh, and so this sign says there's a price for foreigners and there's a price for locals. And sometimes when we think of dual pricing, maybe like in China, you know, there's like it's like the hidden price. Like you go to a shop and there's no posted prices and you're a foreigner and it's twice as much and you're a local and it's cheaper because you can haggle. And by the way, that goes on in Thailand too in like the markets and things like that. But it, it's actually official. Like you go to museums, heritage sites, and national parks, they will have a dual price. They'll have the local price and they'll have the foreigner price. Uh, also, prices in Thailand, um, like in shops and things like that, um, generally show it uh, with out the uh, they have like a seven percent value added tax which is added to the price of all goods and services um, Yoshi wants to know what's my favorite place in Thailand we really like this uh, town called Ayutthaya it's about an hour's drive outside of Bangkok without traffic uh, it's like a former capital of Thailand there's kind of like these neat old ruins uh, it's uh, it's a pretty cool place I have a video on that if you want to see it uh, Brian asks if I shy away from all the street foods from all the Asian places that I visit. I would not say that I shy away from all the street foods from all the Asian places that I visit. Uh, I eat the street food a lot in Taiwan, in Japan, in Korea, in Singapore. Um, we did not do the, the we did not do the street food to the truest name of street food in Thailand uh, because. Then you, then you get like, you know, if you're in Bangkok, you get the Bangkok belly. Um, so we ate a lot of street food type food, but in food courts because they were also air conditioned and they've got running water. And that's just that's just a lot nicer and cleaner for us. So uh, I have a whole video about the best food courts in Bangkok, uh, which you can see all the things uh, that we ate on our trip when we visited there. Uh, and Kathy says uh, she loves sleeping in in the morning, so Thailand would suit her. Yeah, it's, you know, you don't have to wake up too early. Joe asks uh, if we saw elephants in Thailand. We did. I should have put one of my pictures for this, uh, but we saw some elephants when we went to Ayutthaya, which was pretty neat. Um... Let's see. Uh, Anne wants to know, how are their women different than the USA? I think that's probably, there's probably like a whole whole stream of its own, probably, for like the difference between men and women in different cultures. Uh, Thailand is famous for the lady boys, though, which are women that maybe aren't women. Uh, Kathy says, hi, Chris. Uh, I enjoy your videos. I'm allergic to peanuts. Do they use a lot of peanuts and peanut oil in Thai cooking? They probably do. Um, so... Not in everything, but there is quite a bit of peanuts there. Uh, and uh, Melissa helps spell out my favorite Pad Thai restaurant. So if you're going to Bangkok and you want to check it out, uh, that's its name, Tips of My Pad Thai. And I never got the end there, um, but yes, it's, it's a really delicious place, and you'll see the pictures coming up. So thank you for that, Melissa. Uh, and Yoshi uh, won a neck gaiter on a previous live stream, uh, and he can't wait to wear it. So excellent. Um, Carlos wants to know what's my favorite type of food in Thailand. Um, probably, probably one of my favorite foods in Thailand, 
besides Pad Thai, because I like Pad Thai, and we'll talk more about Pad Thai as we go through this hour we're doing. Uh, but I really also really like, uh, it's called Khao Soy. It's a type of noodle in kind of a yellow curry broth. The noodles, there's like noodles that are fried and noodles that aren't. It typically has some chicken in it. I also love mango sticky rice. Um, you know, they love their durian, their durian in Thailand, the really stinky fruit. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the durian. Uh, but I feel like all the food in di- Thailand is delicious and cheap and inexpensive uh and emmett points out that uh, hangover two was right uh yeah there you go uh all right chicken um okay the ninth thing that surprised visitors to thailand particularly if they come from a tipping uh society like the u.s is that uh tipping is not expected in thailand which i actually quite appreciate it's not expected in most places in the world outside of the u.s uh you can leave some coins while leaving at the rest eating at the restaurant if you want to appreciate uh, folks. Um, but uh, hotels and restaurants that do cater to tourists uh, may often add a 10% service charge to their bills. This was also kind of a, a neat uh, like shopping mall we went to called Asia Teak. And to get there, like the best way to get there and the way that most people get there is they actually take a ferry. Like you take the subway to the stop and then you get off the subway and you wait for a ferry and there's like this complimentary ferry that takes you every 15 minutes to the shopping center. I've never like gone to a shopping center that I had to take a like a boat for my transportation um the 10 thing that surprised visitors thailand uh is that shoes aren't welcome in a lot of places uh temples royal palaces spas people's homes uh ask you to take your shoes off so if you're visiting thailand uh do wear some footwear that's comfortable for you to take off because you'll likely be taking off quite a bit um, even in some of the popular tourist attractions, you might see a sign like this, or you might just see lots of people's shoes lined up. Uh, Brian wants to know if in Thailand they have the best Thai iced tea there. I think so. I think it's really good. You would expect the Thai iced tea to be pretty good in Thailand. The um, the eleven thing that surprised people going to Thailand uh, is that homelessness is is not a thing in Thailand. Um, In my thing that surprised people coming to the USA is that there's a lot of homeless people in the USA, but Thailand, really, they're like, there's virtually no homeless to be seen in Thailand. Uh, And it's, it's, um, although it may not, uh, like, look safe from the outside or some of the places, it's actually a pretty safe place day and night. Um, But one of those places that might not might not look safe for these sorts of places. So the 12th thing that surprised visitors to Thailand is uh, that red light districts are, are definitely a thing, though. And red light districts, they're fairly obvious. Um, and they're just kind of, you know, you can just walk around. It's not like they're tucked away behind things. Uh, they're simply accepted as part of tourism and not, uh, not hidden away. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, in one of these districts, the... Um, the nicest looking uh, ladies might actually not be ladies because there's a big lady boy culture in Thailand. Uh, and I also thought it was interesting. So this is, so we, I strolled into this one um, because we were actually staying at the JW Marriott, which if you look in the middle of this picture, right at the top is the JW Marriott sign and our room looked out here on Nana Plaza. Uh, and um, all of the security guards there were Russian which was interesting. I guess, I guess Russians are, uh, I guess Russians are just, uh, maybe mean people. So they make good security guards. And I guess because Thai people are smiley and friendly, they don't think Thai people make good security guards. Um, yeah. And, uh, actually, you know, I didn't even know this was there. A, A friend of ours that was there with us on the trip in Bangkok came to our room and looked out the window and goes, Hey, did you, did you know your room looked out on Nana Plaza? And I'm like, no idea. Um, Okay. Uh, Waka says, have you ever had Thai jasmine rice? I'm sure I have. Um, I don't know if that makes it uh, particularly special. Uh, Carlos says, uh, is McDonald's the only fast food restaurant in Thailand that is from America? There's a lot of other American fast food restaurants in Thailand. Even Taco Bell is in Thailand now. Um, Okay. Uh, David wants to know... um, if I've ever been to any romantic islands in Thailand, uh, I have not been to any romantic islands in Thailand. But uh, if anybody on the live stream has been and they recommend one for David, uh, please please drop him a note on the chat. Help out a uh, friendly fellow explorer. Okay. The 13th thing that surprised visitors to Thailand uh, is, is valet parking 
uh, is really not a thing in Thailand. Um, and uh, why why is valet parking not a thing? Well, because me- most of the people who work service jobs in Thailand don't actually might not actually know how to drive cars. Uh, and anybody in Thailand who has enough money to own a car would never let somebody who doesn't know how to drive a car actually drive their car. So where there is parking, uh, it's almost always self-parking there. Uh, and I just put this picture up related to this because uh, there's a lot of tuk-tuks in Thailand. Uh, their famous three-wheeled vehicle. This was a yellow one that, of course, you could imagine I like. Um, and uh, Richie points out that the reason why the security guards uh, at the red light district are Russian is because the former Soviet mafia has a lot of underground money there. Okay, thank you uh, for that data point, Richie. Um, all right, the 14th thing uh, surprised people going to Thailand, particularly if they're driving a car, is if they're going to get gas. Uh, and in many countries in the world, you get gas and you drive up and you do you gas up your car? Not in Thailand. Self-service gas stations are not a thing in Thailand. Uh, all gas stations include full service in the price. Uh, price is priced in liters. Um, and uh, the price uh, is about the same in Thailand as if you were uh, getting self-service gas like uh, in the U.S. and like the south or the southeast. Uh, not, of course, California or New York. Uh, James wants to know if the humidity is high in Thailand. The humidity is very high in Thailand. Um, it's probably one of the hottest and most humid places. Uh, and uh, Justin, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking the water. Uh, Mark says, why go? Uh, yeah, so hopefully I'm not making this all depressing because uh, it's actually a great place to go. But as we get to the food section, I think we'll, uh, we'll get more to that. Um, all right, and the hotels are really fantastic too. Uh, okay. Fifteenth thing, a surprise visit to Thailand. Uh, walking around Thailand can be can be quite difficult. Um, the sidewalks, yeah. This is this is like a like a typical sidewalk in Thailand, uh, and they're just they're not. Uh, sometimes they don't line up. Sometimes they got, they got a lot of cracks. Um, so like pushing strollers or wheelchairs can be nearly impossible on the sidewalks in Thailand. You have to pay a lot of attention when you're walking around. And of course the 100 degree heat and the 90% humidity also make it, uh, also make it more challenging. Um, all right. The 16th thing the surprise visitors go in the Thailand, uh, is public transit. I guess this is a reason, this is a reason why to go. That all those things I talked about, I talked about like the traffic being awful. Uh, the public transit, um, in Bangkok is actually, it's actually pretty good. It's actually really good. Uh, they've got two modes of public transit. They've got this one, which is the BTS, which is called the SkyTrain. They've also got a subway system, uh, safe, clean, efficient runs on a pretty regular schedule um so that uh was really good reason to go to bangkok uh i will say that um and there's some things that like clearly thailand is still developing their public transit and uh like to use the machines to buy tickets you have to use coins and they don't take bills and to buy tickets if you have bills you need change you have to stand in a long line because they only have one window because it's popular um but uh you know that's obviously compared to countries like japan where you can put like the equivalent of a hundred u.s dollar bill and get change back from their machines i mean they've really gone like different levels uh carlos says does thailand have really good service i think they do i mean so Thailand has amazing high-end and amazing low-end too, right? The low-end is street food, but if you go to the high-end restaurants or the high-end hotels, the service is absolutely amazing. The JW Marriott, the hotel we were staying at, the concierge lounge that we stayed at there was one of the best concierge lounges we've stayed at at almost any Marriott anywhere. The staff was super helpful. We could ask them, you know, where should we go? They'd like write things down for us. Um, they also do like for dinner in like the lounge at the Marriott. It's like a full dinner. It's not just like hors d'oeuvres and snacks. Um, so if you are at a place that's kind of a high end place, the service is really good. Uh, and Richie points out, uh, Richie hates tipping culture. I have no problem paying a, a fixed extra rate for service instead of feeling as if I'm being manipulated. I'm with you. I'm with you, Richie. Um, 
And uh, Vic says, uh, Chris needs to comment on the big expat community in Thailand. Sure, there's a lot of people from Western countries that move to Thailand to retire. Um, I think one of the ones uh, is because it's cheaper. The cost of living in Thailand is significantly less than it is in Western countries. Um, so you can live a bit more like that king that I showed earlier in Thailand on a lot less money than if you were trying to, say, live in, you know, London or someplace like that. Um and Michael points out that on the SkyTrain, the air conditioning is awesome. It is. It's well air conditioned, uh, which um, we'll talk more about the opposite in a second. So now uh, the subway and the SkyTrain in Bangkok is pretty good. Something that maybe not so good are the um, the long distance trains, particularly if you're in like the second class or, or less seating. Uh, this train actually here isn't even air conditioned. Um, but if you do travel in uh, first class express cars, those are good. Uh, they're safe, they're clean, efficient, uh, especially the overnight train from Bangkok to Chiang Mai. But if you buy the, the cheaper tickets, be aware uh, that might not be what you are expecting. Um, AJ says, did you know that one night in Bangkok and the world's your oyster? Uh, did I, do I know? I'm not sure that I, I'm actually not sure what you're asking, AJ. Uh, David wants to know if I've ever considered going to Antarctica. It would be a lot cooler, I think, uh, than there. Hi, Chris. I love your videos. What's your favorite Thai snack, street food? I, I love um, I love Pad Thai. Pad Thai is really good. It's the kind of like, is it, is it the street food? Sure. We'll talk more about that when we get to the Pad Thai section. I love Thai iced tea. I love their curries. I love mango sticky rice. I love coconut like ice cream. They have a lot of coconut things or just getting a coconut and drinking out of it. Um, a lot of people have noticed I had a haircut, so thank you, Plumeria, for the comment on the haircut. Um, yeah, I think the airport in Bangkok is pretty good. It's hard to pronounce the name of the airport, uh, but the Thai Airways Lounge is, uh, is really quite good uh, in Bangkok's uh, main airport. The uh, 18th thing, the surprise visitors go into Thailand... <clears throat> is it still significantly a cash-based society? There's a lot of street food. There's a lot of the, what I'd call the informal economy. Um, so if you are buying things from street vendors, whether it be, they be food or clothing, um, you will want to be carrying cash and coins with you. The 19th thing that surprised visitors going to Thailand uh is that um, alcohol, uh, you can't sell it all the time. They have like all really odd restrictions on when you can buy alcohol and you can't. And so uh, there's like restrictions on like hours during the day that they can sell alcohol. And then there's also restrictions that um, no alcohol at all may be sold on election days or Buddhist holidays. So this was a store <clears throat> uh, that had a sign up that says, Today, um, alcohol is restricted due to an important Buddhist religious holiday. Of course, they, they wrote that in English because it's all the tourists that want to go buy that alcohol that don't know about it. Of course, the Thai people would all know that. Uh, Vic wants to know if Thailand accepts the Chase Sapphire in the big restaurants. Uh, they do big restaurants, big shops, hotels. Uh, they'll all take visa, um, but the small stand, small restaurants, likely not. Um, Yes, and the High Road points out that uh, One Night in Bangkok is an 80s song. I know the song. One Night in Bangkok. Da, 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 da. Maybe that was the lyric to the rest of it, and I just didn't have the soundtrack behind it. Um. <clears throat> Carlos says, uh, what are the chances I get fooled by a, a lady boy? Uh, from the people that I know that have been fooled by them, I would say the chance is, uh, the chance is pretty high. Um. The real YT says, from what I see, a lot of people, the low end service is great. People seem friendly. I would say, like at rest, like at every restaurant that we went to, yeah, even low end places, they were friendly. It just, you might be sitting at a plastic table, you know, on a plastic stool, right? If you consider all that part of the service, then you know, hey, but uh, but the staff's all hand friendly and helpful. The um, the twentieth thing uh, is that Thais enjoy air conditioning. So we mentioned that the BTS was air-conditioned well. Shopping malls are air-conditioned well. Movie theaters are Arctic cold. But the, but the buses aren't. This is a, it's a public bus in Bangkok. And uh, I, so one of the reasons why, like for 
transportation in Bangkok, I don't I don't recommend taking the bus for tourists because it's really hot and it's really hot in there. So frankly, it's kind of surprising that their buses don't have air conditioning in a place that is so hot and humid. Um, 21 uh, is that uh, one of the things that often surprise visitors to Thailand uh, are squat toilets. Uh, you'll see this in a lot of Asia, but the toilets that you have to, you know, they don't have a seat. You have to squat down. Uh, but the toilets in Thailand were all relatively clean. Uh, I found there's plenty full uh, public restrooms. Um, and if you go to uh, like gas stations and things like that, you don't have to ask for a key because uh, none of them are locked. Often they build uh, the toilets as these like little almost like separate buildings uh, away from everything else. Um, Greg O'Toole says, what's the biggest danger to a tourist there? Uh, there's a lot of scams to tourists there. So I would say just getting scammed out of your money is the biggest danger to a tourist there. Uh, you know, like the 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 Royal Palace's clothes scam is a big one. Uh, or not using the meter is another big one, too. Um, those are a couple of them. Um, Imane says, Chris, what's your favorite hotel in Bangkok? Uh, I've probably not stated enough to really tell you which ones I, I love or hate, uh, but I referenced the JW, JW Marriott earlier. We really uh, enjoyed staying there. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about Pad Thai now. We're going to talk about food. Uh, and so <laughs> Mark says, I love Thai food, but the rest of the place sounds like the Moss Isley spaceport. You know, I'd lo let, me, <laughs> let me address that for a moment. I will say, um, I think Bangkok is, is an adventure. It really, it really is. So yeah, it probably is like a little bit like the Moss Isley spaceport. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to pay attention where you're going around. You got to watch where you walk. The food's delicious. The food's cheap. Um, we, when we got out of Bangkok into the rest of the country, it's a like it's a lot more peaceful and a lot more relaxed. Um, so I think, uh, I think that if you go to like a beach destination or those sorts of things, you'll find it to be. Uh, Less crazy, less hectic than the than the big cities are. Uh, okay, but speaking of Pad Thai, so this isn't Pad Thai yet, but this is a picture of Pad Thai. So somebody asked, "Hey Chris, what's your favorite Pad Thai restaurant?" This is Tip Semi Pad Thai. But one of the things that's surprising is just the amazing amount of street food. There is street food everywhere in Thailand, and even restaurants that have physical locations like this one, the kitchen's actually outside. They cook all the food at this Pad Thai restaurant outside on the sidewalk, um, and it's everywhere. It's not just like in certain districts for street food. Uh, it's out in front of the big hotels. It's in the luxury districts, um, and then we also talked about Western food. If you if you need your Western food fix, uh, you will find the Western food chains like McDonald's, Pizza Hut, KFC, and now even Taco Bell. Though um, I don't know why you would go there to eat any of that stuff. You should definitely eat the the Thai food. Our general rule of thumb is uh, to just to not eat places that look sketchy. You know, if there's like if there's like a cat walking all over the food, maybe maybe just skip that place and go someplace looks a little bit better. Go someplace that has like it maybe has running water and has refrigeration. Uh, those were a couple couple of our requirements. We like air conditioning. Um, the twenty third thing that surprised people going to Thailand are the food and drink portions are small compared to the United States. Uh, and so I I have this picture here so you, for reference, like the. Um, the drink bottle that's in the back and the bowl. This is the the cow soy noodle that I talked about, one of my favorite things. Uh, An OC girl. I don't remember what she had in that picture there, but you can see a water bottle. So these portions, they're not huge. They're not like a cheesecake factory portion. They're not a dinner plate. Um, you could easily, for lunch or dinner, if you're used to big American-sized portions or Australian-sized portions, you know, get two or three entrees in a food court or a street food place to fill up. I feel like that's actually kind of the fun. And it like it's priced accordingly. It's it's really cheap. Maybe that keeps them fitter, why they don't need as many gyms, because they don't need to eat, uh, you know, horse trough in one sitting. Um, the 24th thing that surprised visitors to Thailand is that uh, paper and plastic plate, paper plates, plastic plates, plastic cutlery, it's really not a thing in most food service outlets. They really use a lot of reusable stuff. Um, you'll notice here at this place that we got chicken rice. Um, this was like 
this was kind of like a street food place, and we're like we're sitting at a metal table, uh, but a uh, spoon and a fork. By the way, um, in Thailand they don't they don't really do chopsticks. I want to I want to and actually if somebody's on like Melissa, if you know, I actually don't know why they don't use chops. Like, what's the history behind Thai people not using chopsticks? But they don't. Chopsticks aren't their main form of eating. Their main form of eating are a spoon and a fork, and they use the fork to push the food onto the spoon and then the spoon to eat. But uh, but back to this notion of like disposable things. At this restaurant, you can see like the sauce cups that are there that have the chili sauce and the dark sauce. Most places you go to that's like a street food place, that would be some like plastic cup. But here it's actually like a little reusable dish. Um, so they do uh, reuse a lot of things. Um, and you may notice there were some chopsticks back there. We OC Girl had some noodles, and so we actually we actually asked for chopsticks. We we found ourselves asking for chopsticks because uh, I just I find noodles a lot easier to eat with chopsticks than I do with a fork and a spoon. Kathy points out that the food servings are about the same as Australia in Thailand. The U.S. for food portions are huge. Aussie portions are not that big. Uh, yeah, U.S. food portions are probably out of control. Um, and Vic points out that uh, the people are smaller, too, so maybe that's why the portions are smaller. Um, Waka points out uh, that uh, they use the spoon and fork in Philippines and Filipino households as well. Thank you for that uh, data point. Um, Maggie says, uh, let's try Taiwanese-style breakfast next time. There's actually, we, uh, Uzi Girl and I had Taiwanese-style breakfast um, a week or two ago, something we got delivered via Uber Eats. Um, Vic wants to know what's the name of this dish. Uh, chicken rice? Chicken rice is what I would call this dish. Um, and uh, Vic points out he would never eat street food too dirty. We were pretty picky. Um, Carlos says, uh, if I've done a cheap eats video in Thailand, uh, I've done the best food courts in Bangkok. That's kind of the closest, I think. Um, Let's see. Uh, Kathy says uh, one of the reasons could be the chopsticks were only introduced to Thailand by the Chinese 200 years ago. Okay, that's an interesting data point, Kathy. Thank you for that. Uh, Brian says if we used Yelp in Thailand, a little bit. Um, it's not super helpful in Thailand. Uh, and uh, Chase asks if we brought something like Tums or Pepto-Bismol. Uh, I have a lot of stomach acid, so I often travel with Tums. Um, we travel with Imodium generally too, so um, we usually have those around just in case. The 25th thing that often surprised visitors to Thailand uh, when eating in restaurants, free water is also not a thing. Um, if you want something to drink, you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, so if you want water, you'll have to get um, a bottle of water. Uh, usually, if we're paying for it, then we order something else. We get a Thai tea or we get these like uh, coconut drinks. Um, now, it's funny. I mentioned that like disposable plates aren't a thing disposable cups are though so you could be at a nice restaurant tips at my pad thai the pad thai place that we really liked uh which you eat in they put it on plates they give you silverware but the drinks come in paper cups with uh plastic straws <coughs> and they're little cups too with the small portions Now, if you order a Thai iced tea uh, from a street vendor, what might surprise you, and by the way, street food right here, you can see the stall in the back that we got this at. What might surprise you is that the Thai iced tea might come not in a cup, but in a bag. This is the traditional way of serving Thai iced tea from a street vendor. You get the bag, uh, it's got the Thai iced tea in it, and then they give you a straw to drink your Thai iced tea out of a bag. And, you know, being... Um, well, a little uh, having channeling my high high class British part that I have no British in me, uh, but I got my little pinky up there having my you know afternoon high tea. Um, Jean asked if we use mosquito repellent in Thailand. Which brand works the best? We did. We just we got something we bought at Target that we just kind of sprayed on. I don't I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Grovel does point out uh, one reason why uh, there might not be free water is that tap water is not generally safe for drinking in Thailand, um, which is a good point. Uh, and so that's probably why uh, you buy bottles. They bring you bottles because then you know it's bottled and you know it's not um, tap water. 
Greg asks if it's strange to be recognized when you're out and about. I no longer find it strange. I have, I find it uh, I find it humbling or cool. It's kind of neat to to realize that um, you know uh, enough people watch my videos that then there's actually people in the real world to be like, hey, I love your video. So I think it's pretty neat. So if any of you see me in real life, uh, definitely give me a shout out. Say hey. Um, okay. So I mentioned that um, the tap water is not that safe to drink, uh, but uh, but the ice is. Uh, the ice is safe because generally the ice comes from like special vendors that just make the ice that use uh, safe water. Uh, and so in Thailand, most cold drinks are served with ice. But if you ask for a drink without ice, then people are often surprised that they'll be charged more for a drink without ice than a drink with ice. So if they ask you, do you want ice or not, and you don't want to get charged more, well, you should you should ask that question. I love ice, so I'm never gonna ask um, I'm never gonna ask for a drink um, without ice. Jonathan says uh, they make their ice with tap water. Uh, typically, like the places that are giving you the ice, they don't make it there. They typically get the ice brought in. Uh, and we had ice in all of our drinks and uh, did not get sick and no issues. James uh, says, uh, do they have Coca-Cola in Thailand? They do. Of course, you can get Coca-Cola in Thailand. No problemo. Um, Billy uh, says, does Thailand still have the COVID? I think everybody is currently dealing with um, COVID-19. I think Thailand's doing a pretty good uh, job on controlling it currently. Uh, so I don't think they currently have any huge outbreaks. Okay, the uh, 28th thing that surprised me to Thailand is the Pad Thai does not taste or look really anything like it does back home. Uh, it actually tastes much better. This is the Pad Thai from my favorite Pad Thai place. That tips at my Pad Thai. And uh, this is one that has an egg omelet around it. So the noodles are inside that egg omelet. There's a couple of big shrimps on it. Uh, pad Thai around the world um, can often be sort of like um, saucy in texture or taste. It's pretty uh, dry and not saucy. The portions are quite small. So OC Girl and I ordered Five, between the two of us, we ordered five uh, pad thai servings to uh, kind of fill ourselves up as a meal. They generally, the Thais generally eat pad thai not as like an entree, but generally eat it more as a as an appetizer to then have other things. Um, the real YT uh, wants to know if I'm going to miss uh, going to Comic Con for this year. Of course, I'll miss going to Comic Con any year, uh, but they'll be back next year, so it's all good, you know. Uh, and Fix says it doesn't look like pad thai, but it is best pad thai ever. There's noodles in it, um, so yeah. Okay. Twenty ninth thing the surprise visitors going to Thailand uh, is the milk. The milk sold in stores in Thailand uh, is often powdered milk, uh, and if you want non-powdered milk, uh, be sure it says fresh milk. This was a cafe that we went to that specialized in milk, uh, and you can actually see on the menu, if you look there in the upper left, uh, the milk, you can get like the fresh milk in the bottles, or you can get their specialty, which is hot or iced milk, in that case it was powdered, and iced, when they say iced milk, the like the milk really has ice in it. I've never, never anywhere else in any country have I been served milk with ice in it. Um, oh, it was pretty tasty and sweetened. Uh, it was probably better than other powdered milks that I've had. Not to say that I've had a lot of powdered milk places. Um, most cafes in Thailand, uh, if you're getting a coffee, they will have skim or whole milk to add to your hot coffee. Uh, and if you're looking for half and half, that is called uh, half cream. Uh, and by the way, the real YT points out that the shrimp I showed before looked good. It was really good. It's really good. Uh, and Mark says it looks amazing. I think this place is a reason uh, to visit Thailand uh, all of itself. Uh, and Zolos wants to know how is the Taco Bell in Thailand? I have, I have no idea. I have um, never been to the Taco Bell in Thailand. So uh, if anybody has been to the Taco Bell in Thailand, please let a fellow explorer know. The 30th thing that surprises visitors to Thailand is just the the range of tourists that are there and the range of options uh, from backpackers to high-end tourists and high-end hotels. So I think 
I think Thailand really got popular in the world's tourist perspective as a backpacking destination. This is Khao San Road in Bangkok, um, one of the most famous backpacking destinations. So Thailand has a lot of hostels. It has a lot of low-end options. And so there's a lot of people there that are also, you know, trying to do like their week in in Thailand for like $200. But then just down the road, you'll find like the Mandarin Oriental, uh, you know, with rooms that are not $20 a night, but rooms that are $500 a night. And OC Girl and I, we considered uh, staying at the Mandarin Oriental, but then realized that they they have a, like a requirement that if you're in the lobby of the hotel in the evening, you have to wear uh, like long pants and long sleeve shirts. And we're like, Oh, that sounds awful in a place that's so hot, you know, but that's the that's the high end. There's people so it's it's interesting as a destination that there's so many places that there's so many people that visit Thailand on both ends of that scale. And I and I don't know a lot of destinations that are typically that same way. Like you go to you know, you go to Paris and Paris is a pretty high end destination, you know? Um, but you go to well, you go to Mexico, and Mexico's maybe a bit of a lower-end destination, even though Mexico's getting a bit of a high-end, too. Um, Yuritza says, I like drinking iced milk with my cereal. All right, that's good, Yuritza. Um, Dallas says, when you don't like any sort of seafood, what do you recommend? Uh, there's a lot of non-seafood options, Dallas. Um, uh, there's a lot, frankly. I just I like shrimp, so there's a lot of shrimp. But uh, the curries that they have, you can get it with almost any meat, right? You can get it with pork. You can get it with beef. You can get it with chicken. They have a lot of chicken dishes. So, like, the meat that I would probably recommend uh, in Thailand, if you don't like um, if you don't like seafood, I'd recommend the chicken. Uh, or if you don't like the chicken, you want vegetarian, you can go for tofu as your option, too. Uh, Gravel says... Um, this uh, I was supposed to go to Thailand for three weeks this month. This video is making me a little sad. Well, hopefully, I'm sure you will get to grovel. You will get to grovel. You will get to Thailand eventually, grovel. Uh, w. Sheik says, great podcast, very informative. Um, Aussie says, the question of the day that I should uh, ask to give out a Yellow Productions uh, some swag later is, how many 7-Elevens are there in Thailand? That's a good question, which I did not research the answer to, so... Uh, I'm curious, though, Aussie, if you know the answer, what, what is the answer to that question? Um, and the 31st thing that surprised visitors to Thailand uh, is that um, Thailand has a lot of huge indoor shopping malls. This is like one of their main shopping streets in Bangkok, and these shopping centers are huge. They're high-end. They're really nice. They've got low-end ones, too. They've got huge outdoor markets like uh, Chatu Chuck. Uh, but if you're looking for, like, Western-style grocery stores, um, those don't really exist all that much. Uh, they're limited to the major cities and the tourist resorts. They're there, but they're, they're, they much more cater to tourists as opposed to the locals. Uh, they do the local shopping and much more local markets, outdoor stalls, things like that. Sometimes places that might only be open in the morning, not open all day. Uh, but we, Osigro and I, were really impressed by the shopping malls. Um, so now before we go to question and answer time, uh, and only because Mark said, Chris, you're talking about all this stuff. Why Why do you, why do you want to go there? Why do you want to go to, why do you want to go to Thailand? Uh, and so I'll say that actually when Osigro and I went, to Thailand. Well, I'm trying to put myself in the middle here. Uh, my expectations, my expectations were low because I like developed countries. I like air conditioning. I like clean places, and I wasn't, I wasn't sure that I was gonna like Thailand. Uh, but even all those things that I talked about, the traffic, the scams, this and that, uh, we really, we really loved our stay. Um, we spent, we spent a week in Bangkok and took a few side trips out of Bangkok. Um, which uh, we enjoyed. We want to go back. We want to visit um, some more of the country. Uh, so when Leedy says, hey, what's the best beach? We didn't visit any beaches on our trip, uh, so we hope to go back and visit some. So I don't have an answer for you on that one. But another one, if there's any people who love Thailand and have an answer for Leedy, uh, please drop her a note in the comments. Uh, so if you're considering a trip to Thailand, uh, please don't let anything I said before discourage you. Uh, it's a really great, friendly place to visit, awesome food, uh, inexpensive, friendly people. The scams are real. The scams are a real deal. So make sure you watch my bank Bangkok scams video and keep your guard up. That was the part that that kind of 
you know, put like a slight damper on our trip, but not enough of a damper for us to, you know, write Thailand off or anything. Um, and uh, so, by the way, you see the spinning question mark. You see the spinning question mark. Uh, it means question answer time. So uh, about the next 10 minutes, I'll uh, answer any questions that you've got. If you asked one before and I didn't answer it, uh, ask again. Make sure you put a question mark at the end of it so that uh, I see it's a question. Uh, Yoshi wants to know where is the X keys. The X keys is right here. This is the thing that I use to control all the stuff on the live stream. Put the comment on, put the comment away, put the little, you know, oh, PowerPoint up. I don't know why that's not showing it anymore, but all right. Probably because I got the questions up. Um, Emmett says, is it easy to make your way around if you only speak English? Uh, I think so. There's so many... Um, there's so many non-Thai speaking tourists that English kind of becomes the like the common tourist language. Uh, and we found even the taxi drivers that didn't speak English, like they try. We had a taxi driver who I would say his English, like he probably knew 50 English words, but he chatted with us for the entire 20-minute um, taxi ride at another, you know, super friendly guy. Um, one of the things uh, we did on one of our days, we uh, we rented a car with a driver when we went to Ayutthaya, which was really nice. Uh, so I would recommend if you're worried about getting around, um, you could rent um, all-day car service. It was like 100 bucks for our, our all-day car service, which uh, is pretty reasonable. Uh, um Brian asked if they have FBI as dessert, and if so, was it good? What's FBI? It's definitely not the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, AB wants to know, what's a good Japanese supermarket in California? My favorite is Mitsua, um, and it depends what part of California you're in. Uh, Mitsua, also Tokyo Central, and Marukai, Nijia. Those are the best uh, Japanese supermarkets in those best Japanese supermarkets in California. Yoshi wants to know, how many pandas do I have? Uh... About 20. That's the number. I don't have a current count on it. Um, Jason says, is there a country that I haven't visited that I want to go to eventually? There are a lot of countries that I have not visited that I would like to go to eventually. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll visit them all at some point in time. We have not visited uh, anywhere in Latin America or anywhere in Africa. Of those two continents, we probably want to go to Latin America first, uh, to Peru, to visit... Machu Picchu. Claude says, where's the best area to stay in Thailand? Thailand's a big place. It's like as big as France. So to ask like, where's the where's the best place to stay in a big place like that? It's really hard to answer. Depends what you like. Um, what I would say, if you're going to Bangkok, find a hotel that is along the either the BTS or the subway line. So you can use those as a primary method of transport to go long distances since the traffic is so bad and then use taxis as uh, short distances. Uh, so on the dessert question, Jake says, what's your favorite dessert in Thailand? And Jake, I, I see you changed your thumbnail picture. That's a, I don't, what, what is that a picture of that you've got there? Um, is that something from Japan maybe? Uh, anyway, now that I'm not being distracted by your picture, I really like mango sticky rice as my favorite dessert, uh, in Thailand. We had mango sticky rice like all the time. Uh, oh, Brian says FBI is fried banana ice cream. I, I feel like we saw it in Thailand, um. We didn't, we didn't order it, though. Um, Grant asked, uh, how are flight prices to Thailand? From the U.S. West Coast, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, I think, I don't know, I think we paid like $800 round trip from Los Angeles to Bangkok. So, uh, Solos wants to know if I've been to Portland, Oregon, or Vancouver, Canada. I have been to Portland. I have not been to Vancouver. OC Girl has been to Vancouver. James wants to know if there's a problem with pickpocketers. I don't think there's as, as significant pickpocketing issues in uh, Thailand as in, uh, like, Europe, like the UK. Somebody asked where the original Topher was stolen earlier. He was stolen in London, in the UK. Like Europe, like pickpocketing is like out of control. Uh, I think the the scams in Thailand, like I don't think that like the Thai people, um, I don't think they like to be criminals. Uh, and so the scamming is like they try to charge visitors more than they should be charged. And everything is about 
you know, voluntarily giving the scammer your money because you they told you it cost more. They did something to, to lead you to believe that. Um, and I think that's where, like, pickpocketing kind of crosses that line as they're, well, no, I'm just providing a service. It just costs more, you know. Uh, Yoshi wants to know, how will elevators be after the pandemic? Uh, after the pandemic, they'll be fine because everybody will be cured of COVID-19. During the pandemic, like in Las Vegas, there's a lot of elevators. They're recommending people, you know, have like less people per elevator. But I feel like that gets hard. You know, if you've waited, you've been in hotels where you've waited for elevators. You're like, this one's full. This one's full. You know, like at some point I'm just going in. So, um, Kathy wants to know uh, where we plan to go on our next trip. Um, we uh, we have no plans currently for our next trip. We're waiting to see how kind of everything settles out. Uh, and I've I've never been to Bisden Baden. Maybe that's supposed to be Baden Baden. Um, and yes, Jake says uh, my thumbnail is a billiken from Japan. Very good. I could not remember the word billiken at the time. Cool. Uh, Jeff says, uh, if coming from the eastern United States, would it be a good idea to do a day trip in Los Angeles or San Francisco? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you can't, like, if you can't find the direct flight from the east coast and you have to lay over in L.A. or San Francisco anyway, then yeah, a day trip in one of those places sounds good. Uh, I would probably pick San Francisco as a day trip place instead of L.A., um, only because I think it's an easier day trip place if you're connecting through the airport because you can take the the BART from the airport into the city. LAX at Los Angeles just seems like a harder place to, to make a good day trip out of it. Um, honestly, Bridges says, what's the time difference in Thailand? I think from the like west coast of the U.S., it's like 14-ish hours. Uh, I don't remember that off the top of my head. Emmett wants to know, what's OC Girl's favorite vacation spot? Um... I mean, she loves to go back home to Taiwan for the food. So, uh, OC Girl is a foodie. Um, I think she also loves the beaches of Hawaii as a relaxing sort of thing. Shay wants to know which software I use to make the thumbnail. Uh, I use uh, Adobe Photoshop to make the thumbnails. High Road wants to know if I've ever been to Phuket. I have not been to Phuket. Uh, and Caroline says my haircut looks nice. Thanks, Caroline. Floby haircut. So, there will be a video all about uh, the haircut coming out in a few days. So I just want to know if I've been to Tijuana. I have been to Tijuana. I grew up in San Diego, California. So I've been to Tijuana uh, a few times, at least. Uh, not recently, though, because there's just been a lot of violence in Tijuana. So when we go down to Mexico now, if we go down, we go like past Tijuana and we go down to Ensenada, which is famous for being the, the like kind of home of the home of the fish taco or where the uh, fish taco was originated, at least the fried fish taco. Um, all right, so it is, uh, it's going to be giveaway time. Now, uh, with every show, I give away a Yellow Productions uh, merchandise of some short, some sort. Today, I'll be giving away a, today I'll be giving away one of these. I'll be giving away a Yellow Productions crew t-shirt uh, to somebody who answers my question. My question is, what was the name of the airline that I showed a picture on board earlier? I showed a picture of their flight attendants. If you can answer what the name of the airline is, then uh, I will ship you this Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt to you anywhere in the world. Um, and if you don't get to win one, well, you can buy one on the Yellow Productions Etsy shop. You'll find a link in the description below if you want to pick that up. I've got t-shirts. i got mugs. I've got onesies. You know, you could also you could also pick up a mug for the Office Survival Guide, my second channel, where I just published a video last week uh, about um, tips for giving virtual presentations. Uh, if you're presenting over Zoom or Microsoft Teams and you want to know some tips for do that, well then head over to the Office Survival Guide to check out that video. Victor Sanchez is a winner, winner, winner. He is the winner, 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 winner. He is the first person to answer it correctly. It was Thai Smile Airways was the airway that I showed earlier with the flight attendants with the really big Thai smiles. Very good, Victor. You win a Yellow Productions shirt. I will send that to you anywhere in the world. Send me an email with your address and what size you want to chris at yellow.net you see there's two w's there or you can message me on facebook you'll find a link to my facebook page in the description of this video all right and there are a lot of you that also answered uh tight smiles uh but victor was the first one so all right 
Thank you very much, Victor. And Victor uh, left a couple of smiles in response to that. Uh, and uh, this, I don't think this display is quite quickly, like in my YouTube thing, there are these like, cool little smiley faces. So the names of those emoticons that he showed were good vibes, good vibes, and you got this. All right. Thank you very much, Victor. All right. Well, as usual, I want to thank all of you for being here uh, in the live stream. If you want to see more Yellow Productions videos on Thailand, you'll find links in the description to my Bangkok playlist. Uh, it has a whole bunch of videos, including the... Um, best food courts, uh, how to avoid the scams, things to know before you go to Bangkok, uh, the day trip to Ayutthaya that I talked about that we really enjoyed. Uh, and so with that, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you all in the next video, which might just be a video about my Floby haircut. Don't know, not promising anything, but I did just shoot it since I did just cut my hair by popular request. All right, keep on, keep on exploring.